right, so we're going to try to beat the day today because I have worked so freaking much lately that I don't have time to do anything. So I figured, well, hey, why not work till midnight on YouTube and then get up before the sun and get back at it. So let's go paint. All right, so this is what we're gonna try to knock out. We're gonna try to get Randy's bumper done. I know a lot of y'all are gonna be sad about to see the green bumper go, but we're gonna try to knock it out this morning. So I'm gonna time lapse a little of the prepping. Um, but yeah, we're gonna prep this out and get this sanded. We're gonna block down the primer with 180 grit and then get everything slick out with uh, 320. So let me roll you on time lapse. This is a pretty easy uh, project this morning. Um, shouldn't take too long. So we mix up a little dolphin glaze and then we got a little tiny, I mean, it's tiny, man, a tiny nick that the primer didn't fill because I used a pretty good amount of primer on the side of this bumper to try to fill in um, these scratches from where they had wrecked the car. But there was some little tiny ones that didn't get filled in. And I wanted to use primer instead of filler because Filler can pop out. I, mean, I guess primer can too, but primer is gonna be a little more flexible than your filler, which just is just dolphin glaze, so you don't have to worry about this. But on the other stuff, I just didn't want it there, and it's just so minor. I mean, that's that's like literally it. Get this little tiny rock chip. So your dolphin glaze just sands out better and we don't need to primer over it because by the time we get it sanded out, it's gonna be so minor, such a small amount, and we're not gonna have nothing to worry about. So we're gonna let that sit up on that side and we're gonna get back to sanding. Here's what we got 180 on the ends primed out tiny bit of dolphin glaze and then little tiny nicks uh 320 the whole bumper by hand didn't worry too much about the bottom um 320 this side 180 then 320 this side now we're going to pressure wash and scrub this thing with a scotch brake to get this thing clean and then load this thing in the booth and move on to the next item we're also going to go ahead and hit this gas door we didn't do that with the car so it's a small item that needs to go red so we're gonna go ahead and run this this morning with the back bumper. And we're just gonna take some 320, hit the edges of it. And then Scott spray it, and it'll be good to go. All right, so here's what we are going to work on. We're gonna smoke some tail lights. So he bought, uh, Randy bought brand new tail lights. Um, if you have used ones, you can do this on your used ones also, but he just happened to buy brand new ones. Um, they're not really smoked from the factory, so we just wanna lightly tint them, but we wanna keep it where you can still see through them, the lights working, and then also we wanna be able to still see a little bit of red. So we just wanna give it a real classy light smoke. Um, if you have a set of tail lights that are busted, um, not as in crack, actually you can fix crack. If I ever get an opportunity to do that, I have fixed a set of crack tail lights um, by super gluing the crack and then wet sanding that and then tinting over it and you can't even tell. Um, but I'll have to show that in another video. If you have a set of used tail lights, first you need to take some sandpaper and get it down. Depending on how bad the tail lights are, you can use, uh, you can use as low as 180 if the I've used it if the tail lights are really bad. 
Um, if they're not terrible, then you can just do 320 if you have 320 dry, get them all scuffed down. And if they're not that bad at all, like these are brand new, or if yours are used and they've never been painted on top of, then you can either wet sand with 1000 or you can just straight Scott Spray. What we're going to do is just straight Scott Spray over everything um, because these are brand new, so there's no imperfections in them. Um, but yeah, besides that, I mean, this is going to be a pretty easy, pretty easy to do thing at your house, uh, you know, and you can definitely, definitely do this yourself. So what we're going to do first is we're going to just take our Scotch right and we're literally just going to, you're just going to scuff them down really good to make sure that you get them all scratched up and to get rid of the shininess. That way the clear coat has something to adhere to. You can't put bulldog on tail lights because it will spider crack them. So you'll have all these little tiny, uh, it looks like spider cracks inside the finish. Uh, I have not learned what the reason behind that is, like why it does it. I just know not to put bulldog on tail lights because I have messed it up. It's not something I heard from somebody. I literally messed it up myself. So. This is just Dawn dish soap. Uh, you just put a little dish soap in a bucket, mix it up with water. And what this does is helps clean um, any the, any contaminants that are on it. You can also wipe it down before you paint it. When you're doing tail lights, you don't use wax and grease remover because if you use wax and grease remover on tail lights, you'll on plastic actually all plastic, you'll actually create a static charge, um, and that will attract dust and crap to it before paint and you see so you're already setting yourself up for failure so we're just going to rinse this off put the next one up here and do that one these scuff pads you can probably get at your local uh, part store all it is is it's just a burgundy pad it's just a scuff pad when it's dry, not wet. Uh, don't have one that's not cut in half, but basically that's what it looks like. So it has some writing on it. These are the burgundy ones. You also have gray ones um, that are not, not as aggressive. The gray ones, I believe, are a little finer grit. But I use the burgundy on pretty much everything and don't have an issue thing about the scuff pad is being it's like a sponge um, it goes up inside all the little nooks and crannies good whereas if you're using sandpaper and you just fold it up then it's it sometimes can be a pain in the butt to get inside nooks and cranny or if you do get inside nooks and cranny it takes you a lot longer to sit there and make sure you get all up inside them instead of just running straight over them with Scott's right and pushing down on it and pushing it into all the little edges that's going to be it on that one, I think. Get this thing washed up, put it in the booth with that one. Alright, so this is our booth run for this morning. We have the two tail lights that are going to get black smoke tint. They're going to go last. We have the gas door off of Randy's Mustang. And we have Randy's rear bumper that we're going to paint. Um, I'm going to blow dry these off with some air, you, you just got to get them dry, make sure you get out all the cracks, if not then when you're painting, it can, uh, the, the air from the paint doesn't blow some of the water drops out into your paint, so you got to get your stuff dry before you start. I'm just going to time lapse it, we're going to blow this down real fast and then we'll start going over the steps that we're going to use to paint these items. All right, so I think we're gonna put these two videos together, make it easy, a little, uh, so people can learn, but then also, you know, a little bit on Randy's Mustang, the, the 
update. So we're gonna smoke a set of tail lights and do Randy's rear bumper and gas door. So first thing we're gonna do is get our paint gun put together and get some bulldog put in it. And like I said, you do not spray um, tail lights with bulldog. Don't ever do that. So what we're gonna put bulldog on is Randy's rear bumper. So you have all of the little cutouts where it says where it says Mustang in the back of that bumper, and then you have all them edges. As you've seen in the video, I scotch brighted everything down, but I never 100% trust myself, um, and you shouldn't trust yourself either. It's always a good practice to just put some extra adhesion promoter down. It's not gonna hurt anything. Go ahead and set my paint gun settings. And I actually know mine by heart, my fan. So mine has this little notch right here. And all I do is spin this notch around twice. And that's at least where it needs to be, but I can adjust it within that range and be perfectly fine. So the more you spray, the more you'll learn your stuff. I had a couple people ask me about air pressure. Uh, what air pressure am I shooting at? So I have no clue. As you can see, I have no um, gauge on the end of this. I used to have them. Uh, I don't know what we're talking about. Let's see if I have one, if I haven't thrown them all in the trash. Yep, they all hit the track. So here's a nice digital one. So here's one, a digital one. You can adjust your pressure that's coming out of your paint gun, and it will actually tell you across here exactly what it is. I learned a while back, I don't need that. Uh, you adjust your pressure on most paint guns on the bottom, right there the inlet, and I go off of sound. So I go off of what I know it's supposed to sound like. The paint booth PSI never changes. Uh, it has a filter and um, everything on the outside of the booth, so it's pretty much always the same. So I make all my adjustments as it goes. So let's go in here, wipe this bumper down. Um, we're gonna wipe it down with a tack rag, and then we're gonna bulldog it. While we are bulldog or waiting for the bulldog to dry, and we're running base coat and everything on the other one, we're actually gonna start putting some little bit of masking tape on the on the tail lights. So let's go get this stuff done. Um, the tail lights, we will tack them one more time before we shoot them. And like I said, between coats, we're going to go ahead and mask this up. So I'm going to time lapse the bulldog, mask up the tail lights, and then hit the bumper maybe one more time with bulldog, maybe not, depending on how I feel. And then start rolling into um, some red on that. And I do have some red uh, VAP seal that we're going to put down first. So let's get rock and roll. Straighten up my stuff. It's been a train wreck for a minute. All right, so let's see here. First thing we're gonna paint is Randy's back bumper and the gas door. That's got to go first. So let's find his paint. Here's the back seal. So we're gonna lay down a sealer. We're gonna lay down a back seal over the bumper and the gas door. We're not gonna mess with the tail lights for right now. They're just gonna sit there and hang out. They're gonna get done towards the end of the clear coat. You don't wanna be jumping back and forth. You don't want tinted clear coat on the bumper and you don't want um, red paint on the tail light. So we're gonna run the bumper completely, VAP seal, base coat, and then clear coat. And then when we are done with the bumper, we'll take our leftover clear and then we'll add a little bit of base coat to it. And then we'll either run one or two coats over the tail lights of clear coat. The tail lights were perfectly fine, brand new, so they really don't need like uh, build up or UV protection or nothing like that. So all you need to do is just get the tint on them. So if the first time you smoke your tail lights, um, they look good, then you can rock and roll with it. If you're doing a used set of tail lights um, or a set that was already on your vehicle, then what you can do is run your um, run your tinted mix, tint over your tail lights, get the smoke that you want on them. And once you get the smoke that you want on them, switch back to just clean clear. They don't have no tint in it, just straight clear. And then you can build up um, coats of clear coat, one or two more on top of your tinted. 
and it'll make it look amazing. But in this situation, if you're doing a good set of tail lights, um, one coat of clear will be fine and with tint in it if you get it like you want it. Um, you know, but if you wanted to go more over top of it, it's, it's literally not going to hurt nothing. It's all up to you what you want it to look like and how many coats you're comfortable with putting on it. So let's go lay some back still. So we are going to get this base started up. And for anybody's wondering if you're new to the channel or you haven't seen other videos, this is the color that we're painting Randy's car. Okay, so it's a factory Mustang color. It actually matches his wife's uh, Mustang. But we've already cut this um, with reducer from when we painted the shell of the car. Uh, your base coat gets mixed 50-50 half part base, half part part reducer for this brand. Uh, if you're shooting a different brand, make sure you refer to the data sheet on what the mixture is for yours. But all I had to do is just stir up this because it's already been done. We'll load this thing up with base coat and go in the booth and lay some color. So if you are new to the channel and you haven't seen all of the other videos on Randy's Mustang, this is the clear that, <coughs> man, <it's> strong. <coughs> Probably should be wearing a mask again. Anyway, this is the Glamour Clear that he is putting on uh, the car. So it mixes up four to one to one. So we're gonna go ahead and mix it up. So we're gonna go to our four column, which is right here. And we're gonna do I think this morning we're gonna do we'll start out with a two hit number two so we're gonna go to the number two right there on the bottom and then we're gonna come in with our hardener and this should just get me started I should have to mix more but I definitely don't want to mix too much of this this clear is expensive we're gonna go to our next two line which is in the number one column meaning one part so that's four parts clear one part hardener now we're going to go one part reducer, which means we go up to the next line that has a number two on it. So we went to all of our number twos across. So we did two, 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 which is four parts clear, one part hardener, one part reducer. It's very easy. If we would have went to the number three, four, five line, you would have did five, 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 three, 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 seven, 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 so on. You get the picture. So we've got our clear coat mixed up. Now we're opening up some straight black, basically. Okay, so you got your clear coat in here, straight clear. You got your black. You're just gonna pour a little in. Now sometimes you have to do this multiple times. Um, I don't want it too dark, so I'm gonna just start off like that. More than likely, what you think is too much is probably actually not enough. So, and then it's actually it's gonna be pretty transparent, even though it doesn't look transparent. So now you have this black. Uh, clear coat mix. You put it back in your gun and then we'll go in there and shoot it over it. If it looks the dark, how dark we want it, then we'll leave that when we'll be done. If it needs to be darker, then we'll come back in here, put it back in a cup, put more base coat, black base coat in it, and then go shoot it again. All right, I cut the booth off for a second just so I can show you this real fast. So you're gonna. Clean out your gun, make sure you're getting tinted clear, and then you're gonna come in here. Okay, and then you're gonna take your mix, 
and hit it over your tape, okay? So there you go, now you can start seeing the black comes out. So that's when you know you're flowing the black. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just hold the gun back and we're gonna coat over, over it to see what that tint looks like. Coat over both of them equal. You have to do both tail lights the same way. So if you start on this one and it's too light or too dark, really too light, if it's too light, you have to coat this one with the same thing, too light, then go mix up more. If this is too dark and way too dark for what you want, then you're actually done and you have to let it dry and then sand it all off and start over. So that's the reason why I wanted to spray it here because I can tell that that's not very dark and I'm gonna roll it over this one and this one. I'm gonna start back higher at first. That way to be safe in case it is too dark, it won't be so heavy versus starting like this and it being really heavy. Um, and if I start like this and it looks good, then I'm gonna move my gun in and actually do a good wet pass over it. So you just got to make sure you're equal left to right and you do the same thing. That's what's important on this one. Okay, so here's what we got. That's the shade that is on it. You can tell that you can still see it. Okay. I think they look really good. I mean, that's not bad at all. And you can also put a light wet sand and buff on these since they are flat if you want to. Now we do have a flaw right here. So what this is, is actually there's a contaminant not on the plastic, because I know we cleaned them good, it's probably in the plastic. So when they pop these plastics, they put a release agent over the whole plastic and that's what releases it out of the mold. And sometimes when you're painting plastics, it's really hard to get that release agent out. Um, now you use a product called Plastic Prep, which is basically rubbing alcohol if you don't have Plastic Prep uh, that we wipe these down with before we started filming. Um, then you can use rubbing alcohol to set your house. It's the same thing. Like I said, you don't wanna use wax and grease remover because it will um, create a static that's just gonna attract trash into the um, clear coat. But as you can see, we did not do that. These are really clean. You got like one nib right there. And like I said, if you wanted to wet sand and buff these, you could, but these actually come out really clean. So they're not bad at all. And that little spot right there is actually looks like it's starting to fade away. I know the camera makes it look bad, but here in person, it doesn't look that terrible. And what I might do here in a second is I might take a little bit of clear coat, that tinted clear with a toothpick and dab it. If I do, I'll videotape it for y'all, but I just want this to set up for just a few minutes. Um, the bumper, the gas door turned out amazing. No runs, no issues with it. The bumper does not look like I have any runs. Thank the freaking Lord. So I took my time spraying this one. I didn't spray it quite as wet as I you know, would have normally. The car, I wanted to spray it wet, make sure it has a good um, shine to it. This is just a bumper, so it's gonna be down lower and it doesn't need all of the clear coat that you normally would put like on the car. It is New Year's, so I hope everyone has a good New Year's and I hope everyone's safe tonight. But I think I'm gonna roll the dice and try to dab this. If I mess this up, I can wet sand and buff it, um, but this you gotta be delicate. So I will film it for y'all real fast on how I'm probably about to mess these tail lights up and have to redo them, but hopefully not. So let's go get a toothpick. All right, so here's what we got. We have our base coat and clear coat mix in a cup. I got y'all zoomed in and we have a normal toothpick. So what we're gonna do is carefully Just put some tint on it like that. Okay, now you can see that dot, but that dot should flow out here over the next few minutes. And then we will lightly wet sand and buff that area. 
you got to be patient with this stuff and give it time to work. You can lightly poke it to help stir the base coat up in the clear coat and just help it lay out. But biggest thing is being patient. And as you can see, we're already starting to fade away, which is exactly what we want. All right, so here we go. We, uh, a few minutes later, we let the uh, clear coat lay out, clean the paint gun out, and here's what we got. Yeah, buddy. Now that's what I'm talking about. If you actually watched the video and you actually made it to this point, there's your tip, there's your trick to get rid of contamination. This is why it pays to watch the video because I'm not going to just make a single video probably on how to get rid of contamination. I'm going to sneak in tips and tricks in every video or try to what I can to teach y'all stuff. So if you're trying to do this yourself, you can learn yourself, you know, but you can see there's no trick photography there. That's how it lays out with a toothpick. And if you didn't watch the video, you wouldn't have learned that. But yeah, tail lights come out good. Gas door turn come out good. Bumper come out good. Absolutely no runs. Oh, look, I spoke too soon. Look at that little guy. Let's get it off. She's wet, boy. That's what we were talking about in the other video where it's on the verge of running, but it didn't run. It almost ran off the edge. I mean, I guess you could call that a run. So we could say we put a run in the bumper, <laughs> but not one that we got a wet sand. Everything else is good. There's no sags, no runs, no nothing. That bumper don't need any cut in any buff in which it won't really get it anyway because it's a bumper. But gas door needs no cut, no buff on it. It'll go straight on the car just like that. Um, tail lights, I don't think we're gonna cut and buff them because they'll be hit underneath the wing. So there you go. That's your uh, New Year's eve update randy's parts hope you liked it like comment subscribe share uh everyone have a good uh new year's stay safe don't do nothing stupid uh we will probably be back at the shop again tonight putting his car together a lot of it we have to brush out the roll cage i'll try to do a video on that and we have to um put the gas door in we're gonna put the tail lights in uh untape everything uh, I might hit it with another quick buff tonight. Probably gonna wait until after it's all put together, but we're gonna assemble what we can uh, tonight and start putting the quarter windows in and all that kind of good stuff. So if you're nearby, you know where CRC is at and if you're a friend of mine, you wanna come hang out for New Year's, we'll be here. We might order Domino's or something, who knows? But uh, if, you, uh, if we don't see you, hope you have a good New Year's and stay safe. Thanks y'all.